We have more for your ears only. I'm David Alpern. I'm Melissa Axelberth with a quote from the news. Ghost of Honor. That was what comic Jeff Ross called TV star Betty White, age 90, at her Friars Club roast, one of the event's few cracks suitable for family radio. She was so old, Ross said, that the color white was named after her. Now this. Lydia, oh Lydia, say, have you met Lydia? Lydia the tattooed lady. She has eyes that folks adore so, and a torso even more so. Night and day, you are the one. Only you beneath the moon and under the sun. Lydia was the signature song of old-time Hollywood singing Marx brother, Mustachio Groucho, now the grandson of another Marx brother, a businessman turned entertainment agent whose nickname was Gummo, is also making his mark in the music world. After years in TV soap operas and films, Greg Marx this week sings the words and music of Cole Porter at Manhattan's Metropolitan Room. And to talk about his family history and personal journey, for your ears only, Greg Marx is on the line now. Welcome to our show. Thank you so much for having me. How strong was the Marx Brothers legacy and show business tradition in your family when you were growing up? Well, it was very strong in my dad's family. My parents split when I was about a year old, so I spent time back and forth primarily living with my mother. And it wasn't very strong in that house at all. Uh, But when I would go over and hang with my dad for uh, periods of time, that was very strong there. He's, you know, he is a Marx and is very happy to be one. And so it was, uh, it was always something that I was very aware of, but because I didn't grow up with it all the time, day in and day out, it wasn't uh, as big an influence early on as it might have been. Well, you're a grandson. Did you ever get to meet Groucho, Chico, Harpo, oh, Zeppo? I sure did. I met them all. I, had, I spent a lot of time with my grandfather. Um, all the brothers lived, uh, usually in the winters, they lived in Palm Springs, and then in the summers, when it was too hot, they would come up to Beverly Hills. And the Christ- over Christmas, Hanukkah, that part of the, of the year, and sometimes over Easter, uh, I would go down to the springs, hang out with my grandparents, and the brothers were all extremely close. So I would be at their house. I remember going to Harpo's house for dinner, and um, it was, it was uh, when I was down there, uh, it was, I would spend a lot of time with them. But uh, again, it was usually when I was with my, my dad's side of the family. When did you realize that you also wanted to be in show business, and how did you start? It was kind of in a back words way. I actually uh, was realized that I didn't want to be a lawyer like I thought I wanted to be Perry Mason. I really just wanted to, to the theatrics of it. So I basically uh, quit school. I had gotten my degree, was ready to go to law schools. I didn't go to law school. I started taking acting classes um, and started doing commercials, then got the soap. I on uh, Days of Our Lives first, and uh, it sort of happened in in sort of a fall-into-it kind of way. Uh, It wasn't a premeditated plan. (laughs) Was the Mark's name and fame a help or a hindrance in staking out your own career? I'd say it was both. Um, Initially, I even thought of changing my name because I was determined to make it on my own. Um, But at that, you know, I suddenly realized that that was something that could open doors, and it did. The problem is that once that door is open, you have to keep it open, um, and and uh, you've got to come up with the goods. So, I think it it raised the people's expectations to some extent, um, but it also got me into places that maybe I wouldn't have otherwise. Well, you kept the door open pretty well. You won an Emmy for work in TV soap operas. Talk about the special challenges and rewards in that branch of acting. Well, the biggest challenge, of course, is memorizing your lines. And I played a lawyer, and sometimes there was a lot of legalese, uh, some extended courtroom scenes, defending my sister for the murder of her boyfriend, you know, things like that, that um, really, I guess they happen in real life, but certainly they happened on soap operas. And there was a, a, a lot of pressure to learn a lot of words, you know, pages and pages of dialogue, sometimes overnight, because you You basically would be working, if your storyline was heavy, say five days a week, and uh, you didn't get to really learn the material until the night before. So that was the biggest challenge. Uh, The biggest benefit is that you're working like, it's like working in a rep company. You're working with sometimes wonderful actors, many of them. Um, On a day-to-day basis, it's about as regular a job as an actor does, except 
now there are very few of them left. They're unfortunately a dying breed, soap operas. Did you get any tips or useful criticism from any of the Marx Brothers? Uh, that would have had to be in a seance because <laughs> um, by the time by the time I really started going into acting, they were pretty much all gone. Unfortunately, I wish I had. Uh, let's get to the singing. When and why did you start doing that professionally? Uh, I started about 13 years ago. I, I always wanted to sing. I was always, it always was something that just appealed to me on a very deep level. Uh, I, I was also, frankly, very afraid to take it out of the world because it meant so much to me. And finally I did. I went to some open mics and, uh, in Los Angeles. Uh, at one of those open mics was a manager, uh, director of a lot of cabaret. And he said, who are you? And I want to work with you. And I said, okay. Um, and it, it, it's just something that I have, I feel about singing the way my acting teachers used to say you should feel about acting, which is I have to do it. And I gather there's a Marx Brothers connection to your Cole Porter show, also including Salvador Dali. Tell us that story. Yes. Uh, it's rather odd considering it's Salvador Dali. Maybe it's not odd. Um, <laughs> considering it's involving the Marx Brothers, maybe it's not odd. But um, the, the general outline of it is that Salvador Dali and Harpo were very good friends. And uh, in 1937, Salvador Dali wrote and then sent to Harpo a, a screenplay that he had planned to direct, starring the Marx Brothers, and uh, he had engaged Cole Porter to write the music. Uh, it was called Giraffes on Horseback Salad, which um, I have no idea why, but it never came to fruition. There's, a, there's more connections uh, in, involving the story, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold those and make people come to the show to hear those. But basically it was... Uh, it was a, an opportunity that was missed, I think, because that would have been something to something to see. Well, after years in TV soap operas and films, Greg Marks this week sings the words and music of Cole Porter at Manhattan's Metropolitan Room. That's metropolitanroom.com. Day and night, night and day. Quote from the news, how dare you? That was TV producer Larry Thompson on a major theme of email he's been receiving since his selection of drug and alcohol plagued Lindsay Lohan to play Elizabeth Taylor in a Lifetime Channel film about her tumultuous relationship with Richard Burton. Next, for new car buyers, a redesign reduction for your ears only.